The PSP soft modding guide tutorial from last year went over very well, so here's another soft modding guide for you guys. This time we'll be modding the Nintendo Wii. The procedure is relatively simple and easy, compared to other consoles, and when we're done, you'll be able to play Wii and GameCube games off of a hard drive or USB stick, as well as run other homebrew software if you want to. Keep in mind that there is a chance of breaking the system if there's an interruption of power, but that's always a risk when modding stuff. First, let's go over the things you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a Wii, but it has to look like one of these. The Wii Mini, despite how cool it looks, isn't going to work. The original Wii has two different variants. One has GameCube compatibility, while, for example, this black one here doesn't. The non-backwards compatible Wiis are still moddable. Uh, you just have to live without GameCube compatibility, that's all. Also, make sure you're running the latest software, which is 4.3. You'll also need an SD card. Some guides say one or two gigabytes, but I suggest a two gigabyte card just in case. As far as I understand, you can't use any of the high capacity SDHC cards at all with this. If your computer doesn't have an SD card reader built in, you're obviously going to need one of those too. If you want to run backup games, you're going to need to get yourself either an external USB hard drive or a USB stick. USB sticks are nice because they don't take up that much space, especially if you get one of these really low profile ones. And some of those have a surprising amount of space on them too. You need a PC with internet access to transfer all the files onto the SD card, like I said before. You can use a Mac for getting the files onto the SD card, but if you want to run Wii games off an external drive, you need a PC. There's software that we're going to have to run that doesn't work on Macs. First thing we need to do is prepare the SD card. Connect it to the PC, go to my computer, or this PC, or whatever the hell Windows 10 calls it now, right-click on your SD card, and go to Format. You want to make sure to format it to FAT32. Keep allocation size as default, and you can leave Quick Format checked. Obviously, any data that's on the card now will be erased, so back that up if you need to. Now we can start the actual process of getting the Wii modded. We need to download something called Letterbomb, which can be found at uh, please.hackme.com, which is like the best URL ever. As you can see, we need a bit of info from the console first because it's a customized exploit. My TV looks like it's sitting in a jungle for some reason. On the Wii, go to the settings and take note of the letter that follows the version number. In this case, it's U. The letter represents whatever region the console's from. So in this case, U means Canada. While you're in the settings, go to internet and console information to see the Mac address, which we need too. Put all that info into the website, make sure the checkbox is checked, and click cut the red wire to download your customized exploit. Open the zip file and extract its content onto the SD card. Should look like this. Throw the SD card into the Wii and click on the envelope on the lower right hand corner. Now you need to go back a day and you'll see a suspicious red letter which you want to click on. A menu will load up which you can navigate with the Wiimote. So just install boot me as iOS. Once that's done, go back to the main menu and install the homebrew channel. There's nothing in the homebrew channel yet, but if you go back to the uh, main system menu, you'll see that the channel's there. And later on, this is where we'll launch our custom software from. To protect yourself from breaking the system, it is advised to install something called Preloader, I actually didn't do that in this video, which I should have, but there's a link in the description with instructions, and it's just a matter of downloading the zip file on the page, extracting it to the SD card, and launching the preloader installer from the homebrew channel. And if you do brick the system, uh, there's instructions you can search for in Google that'll basically uh, uh, use preloader to uh, fix uh, a lot of the issues. Next, we need to install CIOS. Go to the link in the description and go down to D2X, CIOS installer. Click the link to find the newest installer, which in this case is 3.1. If your Wii doesn't have the means to connect to the internet, uh, the website also lists a procedure you need to do beforehand. That's not the case with me, so I didn't need to do that. After it's downloaded, just go ahead and extract it onto your SD card and launch the installer from the homebrew channel. Use the D-pad to navigate the menu, 
Left and right changes the selected parameter. First, select V10 Beta 53 Alt. The CIOS base should be 56 and slot is 249. Press A, then press A again on the next screen. Wait for it to install. Might take a couple of minutes or so. Once that's done, we do that again, but with different settings. CIOS should be V10 Beta 52 this time. Base is 57 and slot is 250. Then hit A again. You'll see the same screens as before, so just go through it as you did. Once everything is done, exit the installer by pressing B on the Wiimote. The whole aim is to play backup Wii and GameCube games, so let's get the appropriate software on there to do that. Specifically, we need USB Loader GX, which can launch games stored on external drives, and Nintendon't, which gives the USB loader the ability to launch GameCube games. Take out the SD card and connect it to the computer again, download USB Loader GX, Link is in the description. Extract the files into the apps folder so that the folder structure looks like this. Now we need Nintendo owned in order to run GameCube games. Go to the official Nintendo website. Again, link is in the description. Scroll down to the quick installation section. Download these three files here. Loader.dole, meta.xml, and icon.png. If one of these files opens in the browser rather than Starting a download, you can always right-click and save as. Now you need to make a Nintendon't folder in the apps folder of the SD card. Put the three files in there that you just downloaded. And uh, rename loader.dole to boot.dole. That's all the software we need. Eject the SD card and throw it back into the Wii. The games need to be stored somewhere, so let's prepare our external hard drive. We need to format it to FAT32 in order for the Wii to be able to recognize it. If your chosen storage device is under 32 gigabytes, you can just use the Windows format tool in the same way as with the SD card. I'm going to be using a 750 gigabyte hard drive, so I can't use the Windows formatting tool. Instead, I use the verbatim Smart Disk FAT32 tool. Just Google it, um, or check the link in the description. You don't even need to install it, just extract it wherever you want, start the program, select your drive, and format the thing. If you have physical copies of Wii and or GameCube games, you can just skip these next steps. Start the USB loader, put your game in, and let it copy the game to the hard drive. If you're using ISO files that you either ripped yourself or downloaded off the web, then you'll have to do what I'm going to explain next. Make two new folders on the hard drive, Games and WBFS. GameCube games go in Games and Wii games go in WBFS. For GameCube games, you need to make a folder inside the games folder named whatever the name of the game is and put the ISO file in that folder with the ISO being renamed to game.iso. With games that consists of two disks, you have to name the first disk game.iso and the second disk2.iso. The website uh, that I talked about earlier of Nintendo uh, illustrates that, so you can check that out. Wii games require a bit of a different process. You need to get a program called Wii Backup Manager Again, link is in the description. Just extract it onto wherever you want on your computer. All right, here's why you need this program. FAT32 has a file size limit of four gigabytes, which many Wii games exceed. This tool takes the ISO file and converts it into another type of file and splits it into chunks to get around the size limit. You can add files or folders if you wanna do bulk conversions too. Uh, check which games you want to convert, go to transfer, click WBFS, and select which folder you want to save to. You can see the end result here. Each game has a folder with a WBS file or files in it. If you didn't save it to the hard drive straight away, throw the games into the WBFS folder and you're good to go. Also, when connecting the hard drive, make sure to use this USB port here. That's the default port USB loader uses. You can change that in the settings, but might as well get it right the first time. Here we are, the SD card is in the console and the drive is connected as well. Let's go to the homebrew channel. You'll see USB loader, as well as some other things. You can ignore those, I played around with a few things. You should see your games straight away, but if not, go through the settings and make sure everything's pointing to the correct directories, and that Nintendo is the default GameCube loader. Like I mentioned before, if you have physical copies, you can install them at this point. Hit the little plus icon and it'll copy the disk's content onto the hard drive. And a cool thing to note is that when you're playing GameCube games, you don't have to use a real memory card. Nintendo creates a virtual one. 
If you want to use a real memory card, you can also disable memory card emulation in the Nintendo settings. Hopefully everything worked out for you. If you have any problems, make sure to go through the video again. There might be something you've missed. This is definitely not a be-all and end-all guide to modding. We haven't even talked about WADs at all. Basically, with those, you use a WAD manager to install WAD files, and usually they end up as channels, so you don't have to go into the Homebrew channel to launch all the Homebrew applications. But that's something best left for perhaps another video. I think running games off an external drive is what most people want to do anyway, and it's a decent introduction to the whole modding thing. Now, normally I don't like to say things like this, but if you found the video helpful, please hit the like button or even subscribe if you haven't yet. Apparently saying stuff like this helps even though it's the end of the video and most people aren't watching anymore anyways. If you like what I do, please check out the channel's Patreon page. There are a few people who think I'm worthy of supporting, which is beyond generous. Of course, I try my best to give supporters some neat goodies like early access to videos and things like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.